Hi, my name is Srinija Kunduru and I'm currently taking an introductory neuroscience class at Georgia Tech. For this class, I'm performing extensive research on the topic of motor coordination. In this video, I'll be reviewing Optimal Feedback Control as a Theory of Motor Coordination written by Emmanuel Torda from University of California, San Diego and Michael Jordan from the University of California, Berkeley. This article was published in Nature Neuroscience in 2002. Discussing the findings of Toradov and Jordan, it is important to discuss the difficulty in understanding motor coordination. The complexity arises from the apparent conflict between two fundamental properties of the motor system the ability to accomplish high level behavioral goals reliably and repeatedly versus a large variability on the level of movement details. Recent research has shown that motor compensation occurs in a way that maintains task performance rather than a specific stereotypical movement pattern. Current model of des desired trajectory hypothesis does not account for this finding because it implements a strict separation between trajectory planning and trajectory execution, which is motivated by a computational simplicity rather than optimality. Several limitations in this theory initiate the development of the optimal feedback control theory. This theory suggests that motor systems develop a control schema for a given task rather than a desired trajectory. This model makes several valid and useful assumptions, such as instantaneous noise in the motor system is signal dependent. The state of the plant, which is either the arm or the hand, is only observed through delayed and noisy sensors. Performance is defined in terms of endpoint error instead of trajectory details. And finally, the effort penalty contributes to the feedback control. Using assumptions in the model, several experiments are performed to measure mechanical redundancy, trajectory redundancy, and redundancy in object manipulation. Most of these experiments are performed on human subjects and then compared to the optimal control model simulations. Each experiment and their results will be explained thoroughly before comparing model simulations to human subject data, it was compared to the desired trajectory model. As it can be seen in the figure, the optimal control model decreased task error by increasing variance in the redundant subspace, whereas the desired trajectory model decreased variance in all subspaces, hence increasing the task error. This shows that the optimal control model more effectively decreased task error compared to the desired trajectory model. The optimal control model was proven to decrease task error more effectively than tra desired trajectory model. Two experiments were done to test the mechanical redundancy. Experiment 1 tested on the task of aiming and experiment two tested the task of interception. Both experiments showed that the task error was decreased by increasing the variance in the other subspaces that were redundant. This shows that the exploitation of redu redundancy occurs in both, in both tasks. The next experiment was done on trajectory redundancy where Subjects were expected to make a planar arm movement through a sequence of targets, either 5 or 21. This experiment showed that increasing the number of targets also increased the time it required for the trajectory to take place. The increased time showed that the variance between the trajectories was decreased, as it can be seen in the optimal control graph. This data suggests that increasing the time for a trajectory to occur increases the accuracy of the trajectory. Next, the number of targets were kept consistent, but the size of target 1 and target 2 were decreased in individual experiments. The results showed that the accuracy for the smaller targets, targets increased by decreasing the accuracy for all the rest of the trajectory. This can be seen in both the human subjects on the right and also in the sim stimulated model on the left. The final trajectory redundancy experiment was a throwing experiment. This experiment was 
simulated in the optimal control model, the desired trajectory model, and tested in experimental data in human subjects. As it can be seen in the figures, the target errors in the desired trajectory model were much higher than the experimental subject data and the optimal control data. This is due to the high constraint that the desired trajectory model places on the simulation. However, the optimal control model, which places emphasis on the end point trajectory, not the entire trajectory, has much lower target error. In addition to the lower target error, the experimental data and optimal control data have much greater correlation compared to the desired trajectory data, saying that the optimal control data simulates the human experimental data better than the desired trajectory data. The final types of experiments were done on redundancy and object manipulation. Experiment 6 tested the subject's ability to manipulate a paper into a paper ball, and Experiment 7 tested the subject's ability to grasp a cylindrical object. Although great variance difference is shown between the two tasks, both the tasks show that the variance is much lower than the tasks relative to the trajectory model for which the data is not shown. Now let's discuss the major findings in the paper. Primarily, the variability in almost all the experiments was not eliminated, but instead it is allowed to accumulate in task irrelevant redundant dimensions. Secondly, uh, the minimal intervention principle was discovered. Deviations from the average trajectory are corrected only when they interfere with the task performance. Also, redundancy exploitation occurs in static and dynamic motor tasks. In addition, the op optimal feedback control model accounts for model syner motor synergies, goal-directed corrections, task-constrained variability, and other phenomena re related to coordination. In my opinion, the paper was extremely helpful in describing the mathematical model of optimal control model and also portraying the data acquired from experimental data as well as the simulations. However, the model did not effectively show how the neural circuits in the brain will actually implement these models and how learning algorithms as we grow up affect these models. The discussion of these two topics would have helped understand the material discussed in the paper much better in a neuroscience perspective compared to a computational perspective. But overall, the paper was extremely helpful in understanding how motor coordination is controlled in the body. And finally, I would like to thank everybody for listening to this review and hope that it has been helpful.